Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Shobhagya Singh, your audio is not connected. Please connect your audio. Okay, we'll start. <coughs> So slide is visible. My slide is visible. Yes, sir. Now it is changing. Is it changing? Can you see the current slide? Yes, sir. First slide, sir. No, it is changing or it is first slide? First slide, sir. What is written? What is written? Title. Could you please read it? Yes, first slide, sir. It is not changing. It's not changing. Okay, fine. Okay, let us see. So we'll start with the BAT algorithm. That is, we'll continue basically. Last class we have discussed this uh, BAT algorithm, the biological uh, behavior of the BATs. Okay. So first we'll uh, take this topic that is movements of virtual BATs. Now movements of the virtual BAT, uh, actually the biological, feature we have discussed. Now we'll discuss the uh, how the mathematical equation will actually it is governing. So in BAT algorithm, the virtual BATs that is the naturally used for simulations are defined by their position xi, the velocity vi and the frequency fi in a d-dimensional such space. So these are the very, very important parameter, the position, the velocity and the frequency. So this has to be, this parameter is required to be defined first. The new solution, xi, that is the position, xi is the position. So the new position and the velocity vit at time t, at time step t are given by fi equal to, fi is what? fi is the frequency. fi is your frequency. So, Frequency equal to the new frequency will be equal to minimum f minimum plus f maximum minus. Okay, so this is the governing equation. So vit, the velocity at th iteration will be equal to vit minus one, the velocity at the previous step iteration plus xit, that is the position at th iteration minus x best. So there will be a best bat among all. So we'll calculate what is the difference between from the best into fi, that is the frequency at the current cycle. Now the position at th iteration, it will be updated like this way. Xit will be equal to xit minus 1 plus vit. So that means the position at the previous step plus the velocity of the current step. This way we will calculate the position of the bat. Okay. So where beta, so see this beta is a random number vector drawn from a uniform distribution. That means you need to calculate the value of beta. Beta will be basically Beta is a random vector which is drawn from the uniform distribution. That means it, the value will be between 0 to 1. 
and x base is the current global based location which is located after comparing all the solution among all the in bands so that means it is the best band okay among the all the bands this will be the best band i think there is a slight problem i will show once again Now, can you see the slide now? Is it changing? Somebody raise this thing. Can you see this slide? Wait. No, sir. You cannot see the slide. Only first slide is shown. No, sir. No, uh, not in slide is showing. It's loading actually. So can you see slide? current slide? Current slide, can you see? I'm not at the uh, first slide. I am actually in the uh, beginning. It is written loudness and pulse emission. Can you see it? Is it visible to you? No, sir. Okay. It's buffering, sir. It's buffering, loading. Mm. Okay, maybe buffering, but I think uh, can you see it? So uh, I will proceed then. Now it is visible. No, sir. Not visible, sir. Not visible. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Let me close this thing and then I will load it. Now it is changing. Is it changing now? No, sir. It's showing lecture 11, the first slide. It is in the first slide still. I don't know what is the problem in the Zoom. Is the problem I don't know, but what is happening here? Can you see the next slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Movement of uh, virtual bats. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. I think it is now it is more changing. Okay. So these are the basically governing equation by which we can actually update the frequency, the velocity, and the position of any bat. Okay. Frequency is fi equal to f minimum plus f maximum minus f minimum into beta. Beta is a random number which you can calculate between 0 to 1, any random number will be there. So the current uh, iteration frequency you can calculate, okay? <laughs> because the bat will, they will modulate their uh, uh, sound, okay? They will not be, they, they basically uh, try to catch the, uh, their prey, okay? So uh, on the, in, in those cases, they need to modulate this frequency. So how the frequency is modulated? With the help of this equation. The everything, whatever we have, we know from the biological behavior. So that is basically replicated with the help of this mathematical equation. Now, VIT, this is the velocity at the current iteration. This will be equal to 
vi t minus 1 that is the what is what was the velocity at the previous iteration plus the position at the current iteration x i t minus x best that means what is the best bat into f i so if i is this frequency whatever frequency we have calculated now x i t the position will be calculated at the current iteration this is equal to x i t minus 1 that what was the velocity uh, position at the previous iteration plus v i t that means the velocity of the current iteration so this beta is a random number it is basically uh, calculated and x base is the current global base location which is located after comparing all the solution among all the impacts so the best one is chosen okay now i want to show you one video you just uh, see this video so that you can actually feel that how that bat is moving So can you see this video means uh, video is it visible to you my screen youtube is video visible youtube this one is visible no sir okay just a minute i, I understand that i understand yeah i need to share it i understand Okay, now I is clear. You can see the video. Yes, sir. Okay, just see this video. You just see. Have you ever heard someone say they're blind as a bat? Well, that expression is a bit misguided. During the day, some kinds of bats can see almost as well as humans, but when the sun goes down, nocturnal bats rely on their ears more than their eyes to navigate. The special navigation process is called echolocation. In echolocation, bats use a combination of their voice, ears, and echoes to create a perceptual map that allows them to see in the dark. You might be wondering where an echo comes from. An echo is the reflection of sound reaching a listener. Sound is a vibration that ripples away from its source in waves. The rate at which this vibration occurs is called its frequency. Sound waves at high frequencies are high pitched. Humans can hear sounds at frequencies between 20 and 20,000 waves per second and don't perceive pitches outside that range. Bats, on the other hand, can hear and produce sound at frequencies over 100,000 waves per second, way beyond the range of human hearing. Here, we've slowed down a bat's chirp so you can hear it. This chirp is the first step in the process of bat echolocation the primary sound that the bat will use to detect information about its surroundings. The bat listens as the chirp leaves its body and bounces off its surroundings. When the sound returns to the bat, the cartilage of the outer ear funnels the sound waves into the ear canal. The waves then reach the eardrum, which vibrates in response. These vibrations are transferred further into the ear to the basilar membrane, which runs the length of the cochlea. If you uncoil the cochlea and the basilar membrane, they would look like this. Each area of the membrane moves in response to a particular frequency. Then, the cochlea converts these vibrations into nerve impulses for the brain to interpret. The bat echolocates so fast that it can track down a dinner of insects moving around in complete darkness. Special muscles in its throat make it possible for the bat to chirp 160 to 190 times per second. Because it receives so much information at once, it has to differentiate relevant information from signal clutter. To do this, the bat emits chirps of varying frequency patterns, each of which echoes off objects differently depending on the object's size, shape, and distance from the bat. Then, by analyzing resulting echo intensities, it creates a mental map of its surrounding physical space. When looking for prey, the bat first sends out low-frequency chirps over a wide range. 
Larger objects will reflect more intense echoes, but it's often the smaller objects, like insects, that the bat is targeting. Once a bat receives low intensity echoes from small potential prey, it will re-emit a high frequency chirp directed toward it. When both high and low frequency echoes return to the bat, it is able to ignore the now irrelevant low frequency waves that reflect from the trees or rocks that surround its meal. To gauge how far away a given object is, the bat analyzes the time delay between when it hears its chirp and perceives the resulting echo. Directional information comes from comparing information the bat receives in each ear. For example, let's imagine that a bat's chirp echoes back from an insect to this side of the bat. Since this ear is closer to the insect, it will receive the sound before the other ear. By interpreting the difference between when it receives the echo in each ear, the bat can guide itself towards the insect. Bats are only one type of animal that uses echolocation. Killer whales, dolphins, porpoises, and some birds echolocate as well. Scientists who developed sonar and radar got their ideas from the study of echolocation in bats and whales. The U.S. Navy and other research groups are especially interested in echolocation because it could lead to even more technology. Maybe now you'll think twice the next time someone says, blind as a bat. Okay, so I hope you have uh, seen this video. Yes, sir. So uh, what information you are getting from this video? Just, just. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, yes. What information you are getting from this video, just share in few words. I've shown you this regarding the echolocation. Please share what, what you have seen from the video. The uh, uh, bats are using the echo uh, to locate their, uh, to uh, locate their, uh, Food means insects, and also Correct. there are many creatures that uses eco like killer whale and some birds also use eco for uh, uh, locating the, the part. Correct, correct. So you, you, I think you have understood that how the bats are they are uh, actually uh, adjusting this uh, voice modulation based on the time delay. Okay, that is shown in the video. Okay, because uh, when uh, the, they are actually sending some some sound waves, it is hitting some object. So from there, it is again re reflected back, and based on the this time delay, they will they actually understand from which direction the sound is coming back. Okay, if it is from back, if it is from the right or left or from the front. They can adjust themselves, they will change their direction based on the direction actually the prey is located. So they will change their direction and they will move to that particular prey. Okay, so that's why this particular video is useful to understand what is echolocation. Okay, because we have studied this echolocation and we are actually writing those, uh, we are understanding those equations also, mathematical equation. So what is a physically, how this echolocation features is there and how these bats are uh, implementing this particular concept that is shown in the video. Now I will show one more video, just to, if you try to uh, observe this thing, because this video will give you more information rather than what I have discussed, because that is a summary of that, okay. So just a minute, I will share once again another video okay so
Okay. So these two videos, you can get the idea that how these uh, bats are actually moving and how they are hunting for the their prey. Okay, now we'll move to the algorithm. So <clears throat> since this lambda equal to this uh, new by f, okay. So this we can this is a simple formula to, uh, how to calculate the wavelength. So this new by f. So here we can we have seen from the video that um, this uh, human uh, beings we can hear up to a certain frequency range. What is the range of frequency we can hear? Anyone can share. What is the frequency range? The human being can actually hear those sound. Hello. Hello. So 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Yes. So till 20 kilohertz, the human beings can actually hear the sound. Okay. But these bats, these animals, they will send this sound signal, which is beyond 20 kilohertz. So which is beyond our hearing limit. Okay. So we cannot hear those sounds. So uh, they are very intelligent enough that how they are uh, sending this signal to the uh, prey. So the product lambda i, if I determines the velocity increment. So velocity increment can be calculated. So to adjust the velocity change, either fi or lambda i can be used while fixing the other factor lambda i or fi depending on the type of problem of interest. So you can understand that if you, if you want to change the velocity, so we need to change either fi or lambda i. This either of them we can change. Okay. So depending upon the problem of interest, the bat will readjust themselves so that this particular velocity can be changed. So in implementation, Fn equal to zero and Fmax equal to 100 will be used depending on the domain size of the problem of interest. So normally we used to take this zero to 100. Okay, this is the minimum and maximum frequency range. So initially each bat is randomly assigned a frequency which is drawn uniformly from the Fmin and Fmax. So generally, when we start this problem, so I have shown you that uh, that frequency equation that was f mean plus f mean f max minus f mean into beta. Okay, so that was the basically initially when we start the uh, uh, this particular bat algorithm. So there we need to assign each bat with a particular frequency because every bat they will try to send a signal. Okay, so which frequency they will send? Basically, this this way we can actually assign them. The frequency. So you can you can see this. This is the basically uh, frequency uh, how how this frequency is calculated. Now for the local search part, once a solution is selected among the current based solution, a new solution for each bat is generated locally using random mark. So when this bat is coming to the closer to the prey, so that time we need to uh, uh, generate a new solution. So how this new solution is calculated? That is x new equal to x old plus epsilon into a. A t means that is at pth iteration. Where epsilon is basically a random number between minus one to plus one. It is varying, you can, uh, that number can be selected randomly between minus one to plus one. While a t is the average loudness of all the bats at this time scale. So you see that uh, bats, they are normally used to change their, their loudness. So loudness can be varied, okay? So depending upon that um, AT value, the new solution that is X new will be calculated. Now next factor is the loudness and pulse emission. So furthermore, in order to provide an effective mechanism to control the exploration, exploitation, and to switch to the exploitation stage, when necessary, the loudness AI and the rate Ri of pulse emission have to be varied during the iteration. So we need to understand what is exploration and what is exploitation. Now, uh, can you tell exploitation is applicable to which stage and exploitation is applicable to which stage? Anyone? Do you have any idea? What is exploration and what is exploitation? Exploration means it's such a special and exploitation means uh, it's a target. Uh, at a global best. 
beta you need to understand this thing very carefully okay exploration means you are exploding over a wide range so your search space is is a very good enough okay very wide search space so normally this exploration stage it is it is coming at the initial initial stage that means when the global search phenomena is actually any algorithm when it is adopting the global search that time whether because see when you are searching a solution within a search space that time it is you have to see that whether all the search space it is covered within the search region that you need to check so it, it may so happen that your search space is is a very small location small search area so the actual solution may be in some other location so you are avoiding or you are actually eliminating the actual solution and you are coming to a, a a local solution okay so that means you need your search space should be search, something a good enough so that you can actually reach to the the uh, 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 proper optimum solution so let us I, I will show you with the help of board let us say this is your search space for example this is your search space now your solution is here your solution is here for example your solution the optimum solution is here okay your this is your optimum solution now you are starting from here okay now let us say if you are not defining your search space up to this region let us say you are starting from here and you are defining your search space this is your search space so what will happen your actual solution is here so if you are defining your search space in such a way you are actually avoiding the optimum solution then whatever so you may get some solution here okay so this solution may will not be correct this solution will not be correct so you are avoiding the actual solution so that what will happen the real solution will not have the optimum value so that's why you need to define the search space in such a way so that the actually the exploration phenomena should be observed clearly okay that's why this is the actually the exploration stage that means when when the solution is searching all the possibilities of optimum value okay this is the exploration stage now what is exploitation exploitation means let us say the your all the solutions it is coming near to this region okay so that means your you have reached up to this point okay so you need to reach to the actual value so this is your local search so that means this is your exploitation so exploitation means when you are doing the local search this is your exploitation is it clear what is exploration and what is exploitation exploration means when it is basically you are covering the global search operation and exploitation means it is the local search operation okay so when we will do this exploration and exploitation stage okay this operation we have to do there is a two factor one is the loudness ai and the rate ri of pulse emission so because the bat will send this pulse at a particular pulse rate so that pulse rate is defined as ri now this loudness and pulse rate it is it has to be varied okay so how this variation has to be done so that is the basically based on that this exploration and exploitation will be actually dependent this the loudness usually decreases once a bat has found its prey so when the bat will actually found its prey they will modulate themselves they will change their loudness okay because initially they will be sending this uh, uh, voice signal at a very loud higher loudness okay now when they have detected that yes the prey is there so they will they will reduce their uh, loudness okay when the rate of pulse emission increases the loudness can be chosen as any value of convenience between a min to a max okay so rate of 
pulse emission will be increased so this is the uh, two things you have to understand when this loudness will be reduced the pulse emission will be increased so what will happen when the bar, this bat will detect the actually the spray so they will reduce their loudness so they will reduce their loudness but they, their pulse emission rate they will be more eager to eat that particular prey so they are very closer to that so when they are very closer to that what will happen their pulse emission rate will be increased their loudness will be reduced but the, but the pulse emission rate will be increased so this pulse emission rate it is basically it will be increased but the loudness factor it will be between some minimum and maximum value that is a minimum and a maximum so between these two range the bat will be actually sending the signal assuming a minimum equal to zero means that bat has just found its prey and temporarily stopped emitting any sound so what will happen they will reduce their actually this uh, loudness okay but when the loudness value equal to zero that means we need to understand that bat has found some prey and it is basically eating those uh, those prey so that that time they will stop uh, basically this loudness will be zero so with this assumption the loudness ait and the emission pulse rate rit are updated according to the equation iteration procedure so this uh, this particular uh, when they have actually found this thing so how this uh, loudness and this pulse emission rate this is changing so we need to understand these two equation so ait plus 1 so that means what will be the loudness at t plus 1th iteration that is basically alpha into ait now alpha is what alpha is between 0 to 1 it is a random value and ait ait means the what is the basically your uh, loudness at pth iteration so t plus 1th iteration loudness will be calculated alpha into ait alpha into what was the loudness at the previous iteration so this way actually loudness is mod modulated this is the loudness is changed now next is the pulse emission rate because two factors are important for bats one is the loudness and second is the your pulse emission rate so when they will detect the prey they will reduce the loudness but their pulse emission rate will be increased so this pulse emission rate rit plus 1 this is the pulse emission rate at t plus 1 -th iteration is calculated as ri0 this is the initial some initial emission pulse rate into 1 minus exponential minus gamma t so gamma is basically it is greater than 0 so this alpha and gamma these are the basically constants okay this alpha is a random number between 0 to 1 and gamma is greater than 0 so this way you can basically calculate the pulse emission rate at t plus 1 -th iteration now so what will what will get ait is greater than is tends to 0 that means rit when rit will be tends to ri0 so when the your emission this uh, loudness will be tends to 0 your pulse emission rate will be at the initial value uh, as t tends to infinity so t tends to infinity means if you substitute here you see if you substitute t tends to infinity here this part will be 0 so that means your rit plus 1 this will be equal to your ri0 that means at t equal to infinity the uh, uh, pulse emission rate will be equal to the initial pulse emission rate and your this uh, 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 ai this ai value this will be equal to zero because at the t equal to infinity it is assumed that this bat has actually detected the prey so the choice of parameter requires some experimentation because this whatever we have shown here this uh, selection of the parameter it requires some experimentation because based on several experimentation we can actually calculate what should be the ideal value for this alpha and gamma so initially each bat should have different values of loudness and the pulse emission rate and this can be achieved by randomization so initially we can understand that each bat when they will start basically their values of loudness and the pulse emission rate this will be different because every band they will try to send at different values of loudness and different values of pulse emission rate because they don't know each other they are basically searching for the food so when they are searching for the food they want to actually uh, generate this loudness and uh, different pulse emission rate so that they can actually identify their prey and they can get their food
Now, loosely speaking, this pulse rate controls, controls the movements of the bats by switching between local search and the global search. So basically, uh, when this uh, pulse emission rate is very, very important because when these bats are closer to the prey, that means they are near to the solution. So that means what is the, what is the, which kind of search it will undergo? Can you tell me when the prey, these bats are closer to the prey, they will adopt the global search or they will adopt the local search? Tell me. Hello. Please. Uh, local search. Uh, yes. Local search. Correct. Very good. So they will, they will basically adopt the local search. So, but they are when they are far away from their prey, they will adopt the global search. So global search and local search, uh, it depends upon the, uh, the different types of factor. Okay. So at the beginning of iteration, a, a bat tends to promote a global search over the local random ones as to so as to explore the search space more effectively. So when it will start basically, the bat will start this uh, process, they will basically adopt the global search, which is basically they want to cover the whole search space. So I have shown you that if you if are not covering the whole search space, it may so happen that actually we, we, can, we can skip the actual solution. So this mechanism is obtained by attributing a low value of initial emission rate Ri0. So uh, basically, then these are the uh, when uh, we will start this thing. So a low value of Ri is uh, it is started, but when it is closer to the prey, so they will they will emit this uh, emission pulse rate will be very high. However, this value should not be too low, thus allowing a small fraction of bats to explore exploit the solution of the bat with a good position. So this should not be very low. That is also true. Okay. As the iteration approaches the end, a large value should be assigned to the pulse rate so that the exploitation takes over the, from the exploration. So uh, you need to understand this thing. When let us you tell me when the bars are very far away from the prey, the loudness will be higher or it will be lower. Tell me. Higher, sir. Very good. Uh, I think you have understood. And when the they are far away from the prey. So there a pulse emission rate will be high or that will be low? Pulse emission rate, Ri. That will be high or that will be low? Tell me. Pulse emission rate. Pulse emission rate will be high or low? You are right that loudness will be higher, but pulse emission rate will be low. Low. Pulse emission rate will be low. So similarly, when the, these bats are closer to the their prey, the loudness will be very low. The pulse emission rate will be very high. So this thing you have to clearly understand that these are the guiding factors based on which the bats are actually attempting to hunt their prey. So the loudness AI controls the acceptance or rejection of a new generated solution. So this loudness has the very important thing, which is basically controlling whether that solution will be accepted or it will be rejected. So the importance of this parameter is that by rejecting some solution, it allows the algorithm to avoid being trapped into the local optima and thus avoid premature convergence as well. Premature convergence, local optima, these factors are very, very important because these factors, if, if you are allowing the, the, your algorithm to trap into the local optima, what will happen, you may not reach to the actual optimum solution and that is not desirable. So that's why it is very much essential that any algorithm, it should not get trapped into the local optima or there should not be any premature convergence. Okay, So that's why this parameter tuning, this is very, very important this uh, tuning of this loudness and this false emission rate. Now we'll try to understand this bad algorithm that is the actually uh, the code. This, this is basically the, your pseudo code I can, I can tell you. So initialize the position Xi, velocity Vi, frequency Fi and false emission rate R and loudness. These are the five factors which you need to define at the beginning. 
okay for this particular bad algorithm while count is less than maximum iteration so let us say that you can define your solution for 100 iteration it may be 50 iteration it may be 500 iteration but uh, this process will be continued so compute the fitness value of each solution so fitness means the objective function value so your objective function your that functions you are going to minimize that thing you will define in the in your problem so that particular value you will compute select the minimum fitness value as the best solution so obviously if you are doing a minimization problem you will calculate which is the minimum solution among the all the solution explore new solution around the selected best solution by adjusting fi pi and xi so i, I have shown you these are the three basically governing equation with these three equations basically whole this bad algorithm is operated so if i equal to f minimum plus f max minus f min into random then vit equal to vit minus one plus xit minus x, x bar that is your best solution into a pi next xit the position will be updated equal to xit minus one plus vit that means position of the previous iteration plus velocity of the current iteration so this way that basically the frequency and the velocity and the positions these are updated Narrow down, down the search space, explore the search space in the nearby areas of best selected solution. If random, some random number, any random number which is between 0 to 1 is greater than Ri, so Ri is your that pulse rate. Generate local solution around the selected best solution. So we need to generate the local solution. So how we are generating that local solution? I have shown you that uh, equation. Ending. Then generate a new solution by flying randomly. So you can generate a new solution so that in order to avoid the local optima, in order to getting trapped in the, this uh, uh, convergence, this low, uh, premature convergence, we are basically generating the new solution. If random is less than AI and if f of xi is less than f of x bar, that means if some random number is less than your loudness value and if your objective function value is less than your best one, accept the new solution and increase RI. Increase RI means your pulse emission rate will be increased and reduce AI. So how to increase RI and how to reduce AI? You know those equations. You need to apply those two equations. Ending. Rank the bats and find the current best solution. You have to rank the bats, all the bats, and find you which one is the best solution. Anyway. So that means the loop is basically ending here. So this is the basically pseudocode of the bat algorithm. Okay. Any question from this? Anyone having any question? You can tell me. Any question from anyone? Okay. So just a minute, I will take your attendance. Okay. Thank you. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.